Hello and thanks for watching Chunk and Chet. If you've just watched our video on the paediatric history, we're going to carry on from that and look at how to examine a baby. Stereotypically terrified of dropping a baby, this one could be an absolute nightmare for medical students. In older children, you can do an examination in a similar way to adults, but for babies and toddlers, you need to do a top-to-toe examination. So I can think of three occasions where you'd examine a baby. A well baby screening for problems, an unwell baby with a general review or a systems review, and in a child protection assessment, but we're not going to cover that one today. Let's start with some tips. My number one tip is to try and examine the baby when it's sleeping. Better that than having a screaming baby, right? You don't always have that luxury though especially because you need to get the baby undressed. It's usually easier to get the parents to do this and to get them dressed again because it's hard enough holding a baby, never mind trying to undo poppers and get them done back up again. Sometimes kids are just downright terrified of strangers and won't let you do anything. So trying to make it a game or by demonstrating on the parent first can help or using a distraction can help with palpation like a little rattle or something, especially if they're in pain. Always explain to the child what you're going to do first Sometimes they might not like it and you might just have to give in and bribe them with something. Let's get going. So with every examination, start with an inspection. You'll probably notice most of this as you walk in the room. But does the baby look well? Uh, if they're playing, that's always a good sign. Can they be settled? Are they attached to any drips or oxygen? Is there any increased work of breathing? And you just need to be aware of the family dynamic. So watch out for any elephants in the room that might make you suspicious. It's always important to report any concerns for the sake of child protection. Like we just said, ask the parents to undress them now, right down to the nappy. Don't take the nappy off just yet because you don't want to get weed on. Time for a hydration assessment. We've asked about this in the history already, but only examination can really show the hydration status. So start at the head and feel the fontanelle. So if it's bulging too much, that can indicate fluid overload and a sunken one suggests dehydration. So just gently run your hand over the top of the head, but don't prod it or anything like that because it's quite delicate. Check capillary refill. You do this on the baby's sternum. Fast as normal, but a delay indicates dehydration. Have a look in the baby's mouth. This is easiest if they're crying. If they're not already, they will be by the end. If it's a new baby check, just put a little finger in the mouth to check that the palate's intact. Feel the hands to check that they're nice and warm. And you can measure heart rate and blood pressure too, but the nurses probably will have done this already and put it on a chart. Top to toe now, we've done the fontanelle already and looked in the mouth, so let's move down to the chest and look at the lungs and the heart. Get your stethoscope out and have a listen to the lungs and heart sounds and have a check for any signs of respiratory distress like recession or tracheal tug. Then palpate the abdomen, we're listening for bowel sounds as well and checking skin turgor and then you need to brave it and take the nappy off to check for any rashes and feel the femoral pulse. It's easiest to find this by pressing in the skin crease that chubby babies have. Whilst the nappy is off, you can check that the testicles are descended and for anal patency, usually at a newborn baby check. Finish off feeling the limbs for temperature and also checking for rashes. Do this on the back too as it's really important that no stone is left unturned. Throughout the whole top to toe examination, you should be on the lookout for any extra features to note, like dysmorphic features, extra fingers or toes, developmental issues or scars. Now, if there's an obvious specific system to examine, do that next, just as you would in older people, but adapted to the situation. I think a lot of people's examination routine can be quite rigid, um, but with kids you've got to be super flexible and take what you can get in the order you can get it. And that's fine, so don't stress. The top tip is to do the worst bit last. Looking in ears or using a tongue compressor always causes some tears. Easy. So the top to toe is literally that. Start at the top and work your way down, checking the relevant bits. Don't be put off by a screaming baby, you'll still be able to ace your exam. Just try not to drop them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.